I want to preface this video by saying that I am not a domain-driven design evangelist or specialist or even someone who's super into it. I just think it has some interesting concepts. But this video, and this is going to be a vlog, um, is mostly about something I've had in my mind for a while. And I could be wrong. I could be totally off here. And the, the DDD folks are going to let me know if so. But it's that domain-driven design is not really about code. And I think that's one of the greatest problems with its messaging. Whenever we see or whenever someone talks about domain-driven design, whether it's on Twitter or YouTube or talks, I'm not saying that there isn't talks about the, the business side, but it's usually about the tactical side. That is, the, the design patterns used with TDD value objects, repository patterns, domain models, you know, uh, splitting the code into different layers like the domain layer, the application layer, the infrastructure layer. And I don't really think that's the most important part of DDD. I think that DDD is mostly about ubiquitous language, that is, having a language the entire team, the entire company, the entire business can share from the stakeholder to the CEO to the developer to all of the domain experts, having something unambiguous, and contexts. And those, to me, those are the core of domain-driven design. I recently launched a course on Laracast called Modular Laravel, where we talk about modularization. And one of the most common questions was, isn't this DDD? Isn't modularizing your application domain-driven design? No, it isn't. Um, modularization was there in software engineering from the beginning. It's, it's much, much older than domain-driven design is. It, it's not, it's not it, it is related, it's definitely related because if you have contexts in real life, if the business has contexts and you want to represent them in your code base, you're probably going to end up with a modularized application. So I, I can see the correlation, but I don't think it is. I, I don't think it's truly about code. I would argue that code is mostly a means to an end, right? So you have a business, you have a domain, you have this ubiquitous language. How do you represent that in the code base? If you want the stakeholders, the domain experts, the project, everyone to use the same language. How do you ensure that the developers also use the same language? How do you ensure that everyone is speaking the same language? Well, you gotta translate that into code somehow. So when you use a value object, you are representing something that exists within that domain and you're being specific about it. You're being precise. So let's say that you work in a business that deals with air conditioning units, you work on the Samsung app or something like that. Can you represent the temperature as an integer on your code? Sure you can, even though not all integers are valid temperatures, but then you lose the preciseness. Now you're no longer speaking the same language as everyone else. What everyone calls the temperature, you're not calling it the temperature, you're calling it something else. Maybe it's a primitive, like an integer. Either way, it isn't precise. So the way I like to think about those design patterns and those uh, this tactical side of domain-driven design, which I'm clearly not an expert of, it's mostly as tools, as ways to for you to be able to represent what exists within the business in your code base. And I think that's a problem with lots of patterns. As developers, patterns are something tangible. You know, writing code is something tangible. It's a way for us to practice what we're learning, and we like learning new things, especially if it's shiny, we want to implement that. So it's an easy way to say, okay, I'm practicing DD, or this is a DDD application. I don't really think it makes sense to say that an application is a DDD app. What does that even mean? I see domain-driven design mostly as um, a philosophy and a practice. So you can be practicing domain-driven design, right? Um, and that's the most important thing. If you only focus on the code, if you use all of, all of the fancy patterns you can use, if you do all of that, if you split your application into, into context, and then within context you have your domain layer, your application layer, your infrastructure layer. If you do all of that and you don't do the business side of it, the strategic piece of it, which is exploring your domain, talking to your domain experts, figuring out this common language, figuring out the context, figuring out how to model the domain, you just lost the most important piece of domain-driven design and you ended up with a code that has and does lots of fancy things that don't, don't really mean anything outside of the app. And I think that's the most common mistake with DDD. It's focusing on those code patterns and code the code side of things 
when the business side is probably most, the most important one. If you had to pick one, obviously you want to do both. You want to figure out the business side, you want to figure out the domain side, model that properly, and also have the code reflect that. But if you had to pick one, I would say it makes much more sense to figure out the business side and just code as usual. Because if you have those insights, sure, maybe you're not using all of the strategies you can use to reflect that on your code base, but you are aware of them. You are mindful of them. And those are the most important things. So uh, what I'm trying to say with this is domain-driven design, I don't think it's really about code. I think code and, and, and the solutions it proposes on, on how you should write code, they're simply common strategies that just like most design patterns, right? Design patterns are simply generic solutions for common problems. So a lot of people were having this specific problem, someone came up with this pattern, or you know, you can arrive at it intuitively, you know, something like the pewter pattern or a factor pattern or something like that. People arrive at that intuitively. You, you don't need to know it exists. It's a common solution to a common problem. Um, so I think of knowing those patterns as having vocabulary. Maybe you know how to speak very sophisticated English. You probably don't speak that all of the time. But if a situation arises where you have to speak that sophisticated English, you have the vocabulary. And that's how I feel about patterns. You can know all of them. You don't have to implement all of them. But when you see a problem or when you see a challenge and you can kind of pattern match, you say, okay, I actually know a way to do this. And maybe you don't even think about that. You just instinctively write it because you know about it. Um, that's what patterns are to me. That, that's how I use them. I, I don't keep thinking about them. I say, oh, okay, now I'm going to use the repository pattern to do this. Or I'm going to use the factory pattern to do this. I just do it. Um, just knowing them just means that I have vocabulary. And when a situation comes, I'll have something to use that. But that, that's how I think about TDD. Um, I think there are lots of valuable insights in this philosophy, like I said, I wouldn't consider me a domain-driven design practitioner. Um, I definitely don't do all of the business aspects of it right now in my life. Um, and, and, and that's another important thing. Uh, for TDD, it's not just, okay, the developers are doing domain-driven design. That doesn't really mean anything because domain-driven design is a practice that has to, you know, include everyone. If you're not talking to your domain experts and to the rest of the business and ensuring everyone has that common language and deep understanding of the domains, then you're not doing what TTD is supposed to solve. If only the developers are doing domain-driven design, then you're working in silos and you're probably just overcomplicating things. I think that domain-driven design is, I hate saying TTD, uh, I prefer saying the extend word, um, term, or not, not word, it's three words. Um, it's the kind of thing that uh, it's, it's a holistic view a, a holistic approach to software. And it really requires everyone to work together. If you just have the developers working with it, I, I don't see how that makes a lot of sense. So I see it as maybe a school of thought or a philosophy or a practice. You can practice the idea. I think that makes sense. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to say, okay, this is a domain-driven design implementation of an application or anything like that. Because... I don't think that means much by just looking at the code. It needs to represent something within the business. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're interested in DDD, I would suggest you focus on the strategical thinking, the strategical piece of DDD, and then move into the tactical side, the patterns, all of that. They are needed. Um, because you're going to have trouble, you're going to have challenges trying to express that domain within your code base, trying to express the particularities of your domain, of your context within the code base. And that's why we have those patterns and those tools. It's to alleviate that, it's to help you to expose that, to, to express, express would be a better word. So I'm kind of going in loops here, but it's, it's difficult to talk about this. I would say that the focus is you want to use code to express the intricacies and particularities of your domain, and you can use patterns and whatever you want to do to help you to do that. But you need first to figure out the business, to figure out the domain needs, its particularities, its challenges, all of that before you can express any code. And another thing that I see people talk a lot with, with DDD is 
it's mostly it's only needed for complex applications and i i don't fully disagree with that sure if you have a very simple domain you don't need to go through all of the hoops you know you don't need to to figure that out it's already pretty simple but the thing about software is first software naturally the case right and secondly domains very quickly get complex so you know take an e-commerce for example you can start with a very simple e-commerce you can select items you purchase it boom that's it but maybe probably your business is going to expand maybe you want to serve customers in different countries and now you have to use different shipping services maybe your company now has more than one distribution center and now you have to select where the item is going to be shipped from maybe you want to give the user the ability to pick up the item in person maybe you're going to mix it an item is going to be delivered in person an item is going to come from a warehouse uh, maybe you do omni-channel maybe you have a marketplace where you allow people to sell through your site so a very simple domain um, which is not really simple when we think we think it's simple but it really isn't because it has lots of small diff particularities that usually differ from business to business sure you have you know general e-commerce domain problems and concerns and solutions but you probably also have different problems depending on the niche you act on the city you're in the state of the country all of that and very quickly your application can turn from this very simple business this very simple domain to a really complex one and we need to have tools to allow our software our code our models to evolve with the business and i think domain driven design proposes some very good practices to allow that what i'll say though is i think did this presented in um a flawed manner maybe um, I'll say that as someone who's not into in the DDD bubble or wasn't until very recently, I did, I did feel very intimidated, especially by the way that some DDD leaders, um, some, some relevant folks in the community used to talk about domain-driven design. I felt that if you're not doing DDD, then you're dumb. That, that was pretty much the message I got. And I feel there's a lot of, I, I think there's a sense of superiority um, by some practitioners and i don't know this is this is hard to say because it could be just me but i do feel some things are overly complicated um especially explanations you have some things that could be simplified and are for some reason presented in a very non-straightforward way and i think that makes newcomers and people willing to learn that a little bit intimidating but that's a matter for another video. And like I said, I'm not into the expert, so I could be totally off here. This is just my, my view of it. I, I used to feel very intimidated until I actually sit down and, and read a lot on it. I felt very intimidated. It just sounded very fancy and, and a little bit, um, I forgot the word here, but it, you know, when you're superior to someone else and I, I wasn't into it. I'm still, I wouldn't say I'm into it, but like I said, I think there are lots of valuable learnings there and lots of valuable practices. So I think it makes sense to to look, take a look at it. It's not as complicated as it sounds, but it's a, a repeating process. It's a practice. You have to practice it. It's not, you do it once and now you're doing DTD and that's all there is, there is to it. It's a continuing um, a practice within your company, within your business, within whatever you're doing. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is just, this was meant to be a quick vlog. Um, I'm trying out this new this new approach, just talking to the camera a little bit. Uh, I have a lot in my mind that I have trouble putting into words or into videos. Um, but I, I feel just talking to the camera in this, this very non-professional way might be a good solution to that. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.